In this section, we're going to look at how we converted some of the old JavaScript code to ES6 classes in TypeScript, and then look at a few language features that are useful when using ES6 classes. First, we're going to have an introduction on our process before we move to ES6 classes. Then we're going to go through a few examples of some class-like JavaScript patterns in TypeScript. After, we'll look at some static class-like patterns, shorting a class with parameter properties, and finally a video on arrow function properties. Before we begin, here are some topics I would recommend looking into in case you aren't familiar with them. We won't be talking about these topics in this course, but they're extremely useful to know about and can help you write better code. One of the best parts of TypeScript is that it gives us the ability to use future JavaScript features, like classes, now instead of having to wait for runtime environments to support it. We looked at ES6 classes before, but in our initial conversion of the project from JavaScript to TypeScript, how did we convert to ES6 classes? In this video, we're going to start looking into ES6 classes. First, we'll talk about non-ES6 class patterns. Second, we'll discuss what makes a good candidate for an ES6 class. And third, we'll talk about our strategy for moving to ES6 classes. JavaScript is a powerful language, and in the JavaScript world, there's a lot of debate about what patterns should be used. A lot of these patterns are good and have their respective advantages and disadvantages. However, this video and section will not go into most JavaScript patterns, but instead focus on ES6 classes and some JavaScript patterns that transition easily to ES6 classes. The important point to take away is that you can still use these other patterns in TypeScript and still take advantage of TypeScript's type system. For these other patterns, I would recommend doing some research online and finding some solutions that work well for what you are trying to achieve. Now, what is an ES6 class? For the scope of this course, it's already assumed you know the answer to this question and that you are already familiar with object-oriented design patterns. In this fall, we get a quick reminder of what an ES6 class looks like. Similarly to the rest of our application, we are storing one class per fall, then exporting it for use in other falls. In past versions of JavaScript, before ES6, which, by the way, is also known as ECMAScript 6 or ECMAScript 2015, no class keyword existed, so class-like structures were often simulated using functions. So what JavaScript code is a good candidate for a class? The best JavaScript code to convert to classes is any code that creates an object of a specific type. For example, this is what the JavaScript code of food item storage looked like before we made it a class. We have a function that creates an object with a specific shape. We'll take a look at this code more in the next video. Overall, we should be using classes as extensively as possible because it helps us organize our code and keeps everything clean and descriptive. When we do come across JavaScript code that doesn't line up with object-oriented design principles, then we should change the design so that it does. So what's our strategy we're going to use for converting our JavaScript class-like code to using ES6 classes in TypeScript? Well, first, we'll identify the methods and properties. Second, we'll identify the scope of our methods and properties. For example, if they should be private, public, or protected. Third, we'll convert everything to an ES6 class. And finally, since we're using TypeScript, we'll explicitly set the type information for any implicit any types as required by our coding standard. In this video, we started to look into ES6 classes. In the next video, we're going to take a look at converting some common JavaScript class-like patterns to ES6 classes in TypeScript.